Good morning and welcome to our online modified worship service here at Fair Bluff Baptist Church today. We are truly honored that you have chosen to worship with us this morning and we pray that you will be blessed today as we come together to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as one body of believers united in spirit even though we are physically separated from one another for a brief time. Would you go with me to the Lord as we begin our worship service together in prayer? Lord, your word tells us in Psalm 100 verse 4 to enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. So Father, we want to thank you and praise you for your goodness and your faithfulness that never end. Father, we thank you for your mercy and your compassions that are new every morning. Father, we thank you for your steadfast love that will endure forever. Jesus, we thank you and praise you because you are the Holy One and you are righteous in all that you do. Holy Spirit, we thank you for abiding within us to guide us and to strengthen us each day. Father, as we come to you and bow humbly at your throne of grace, we ask, dear Lord, that you would bless and guide this worship service, that everything that is said and done would be pleasing in your sight. Father, we want to lift up Fair Bluff Baptist Church, our leadership, our pastor search committee, all of our members, dear Lord, who long for the day when we can come back together and worship you in spirit and in truth here in this sanctuary. Father, we lift up our town in our community. Father, we lift up our state and our nation, even as we lift up the entire world right now to you, dear Lord, asking that you would hear our cries, that you would forgive our sins, that you would heal our land, and that, Father, you would guide us along the path of righteousness for your namesake. Lord, we love you, we thank you, we honor you, and we praise you this morning. And we ask that you just continue to hold us close. And we pray this all in the powerful name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This morning marks the sixth Sunday that we are worshiping together online as we are sheltering in place. That fact overwhelms me, and my mind can hardly grasp the magnitude of what has already taken place in our land. I miss seeing each one of you. I miss hugging uh, each one of you and laughing together and praying together and singing together. How I miss our Wednesday night suppers and, and prayer times together. These are very uncertain days, but we as Christians are assured that we know who holds every moment of the present, the past, and the future. And so I would invite you now to prepare our hearts for worship as we listen to Judith Hayes and Hilda Small as they play our call to worship I know who holds tomorrow.
Thank you, Hilda and Judith, for that absolutely beautiful call to worship. The message for today is entitled, In Times Like These, or a subtitle would be, We're All in This Together. And it's based on a passage in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. So if you would like to get your Bibles to be turning uh, to Ecclesiastes chapter 3, uh, I was going to share with you that I've used this particular passage many times throughout my years of teaching. Um, I've used this passage at senior adult conferences. I've used this passage as a missions challenge. I've used it at a Sunday school leadership workshop. I've even used it at a couple's retreat. But this past week, it hit me so hard as I myself found that going through and experiencing this new normal has been taking a toll on me uh, as well as all of the people around us. It hit me really hard this week when both North Carolina and South Carolina officially sc closed schools for the rest of this school year. That means there won't be any high school proms there won't be any state championships in spring sports after years and years of work by seniors and their coaches. High school graduations, college graduations are all uncertain after years of going to school and working so hard to come to that pinnacle of celebration I found, found myself feeling uneasy just running in for a second to our local Dollar General. And last week, when I went to the grocery store in Tabor City for the first time in weeks, I felt extremely uncomfortable going up and down the aisles, not wanting to make contact with anyone. And all of these things, plus multitudes of other changes, make me sad. They make me very sad because it seems that our entire world has changed in an instant. So what lessons can we learn from this unprecedented intrusion into our busy lives that we know is the coronavirus? What is God saying to us? Because None of this has taken God by surprise. God is sovereign. He knew this was going to take place before the beginning of time. So it's up to us to listen and to watch and to pray and to try to learn what we can to be the people of God that he's called us to be during these difficult days. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, which was written by the wisest man who ever lived, Solomon, I want us to read this passage today through the lens of our current situation. And then at the end, I want us to apply some of the guidelines that we've learned to help us in our everyday activities as we try to weather this storm. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 begins... There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. The footnotes in my Life Application Bible emphasize that timing is important. That the goal of finding peace in the midst of a storm or a crisis or whatever you're going through is to learn to discover, to accept and to appreciate God's perfect timing. Verse 2 tells us that there's a time to be born and a time to die. Already, both of those situations in life have been impacted by this pandemic. Just a few weeks ago, Charles and I were invited to a baby reveal for Grayson and Jennifer Foley, and it had to be canceled because of the social distancing guidelines. If you are expecting a baby and go into the hospital for delivery, grandparents can no longer be there 
to join in at that joyous time with the coronavirus, not only is birth impacted, but death is impacted as well. Just this past week, I had a very dear friend who lost a loved one, and they were not able to be at the hospital at the time that that family member went home to be with Jesus. The funeral service had to be a graveside with social distancing guidelines in place. So even the major events of life, birth and death, have been impacted. What is God saying to us? The next part of the verse says, there's a time to plant and a time to uproot. Well, I want to plant flowers. I want to put flowers in the pots out near the deck. I want to put some new shrubbery out. But I don't feel free to go to Lowe's or somewhere else to get plants. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. As we were going to that graveside yesterday, we were going to do a takeout at Joe's Barbecue in Whiteville. And we went around the Lowe's parking lot and it was absolutely full. What is up with people? This is not a time to go out and be doing everything that you've wanted to do for the past six months or a year. We are supposed to be sheltering in place. So there might be a time to plant and uproot, but it's not right now. The next verse says, there's a time to kill and a time to heal. And I think that this is really a time for families to find out if they really like one another, you know, because we're, we're locked up with those that are closest to us. And you really learn a lot about people if you haven't been spending a lot of time with them. So we need to make sure that we're very cautious in this area. The next verse says, it's a time to tear down and a time to build. And I think this is a good thing. If you've got supplies already at home, go ahead and clean up some of the area. Get rid of that trash. Uh, straighten up stuff. And if you've got some supplies on hand, go ahead and build that little vegetable garden or whatever you needed out in, in the, the side yard or out in a little plot of land. Our next verse says, it's a time to weep. There is a time to weep and a time to laugh. I want you to know that there have been several times during the last few weeks that I have literally felt a blanket of sadness come over me. And I've just wept. And I've cried deeply. I cried this morning before uh, this worship service. And I thought, your eyes are going to be swollen. But sometimes it just hits me that all the things that were familiar and that we loved have just come to a, a halt for a brief moment in time. And that's why it says there's a time to weep and a time to laugh. It's important that we keep a sense of humor during these difficult days. Uh, in our a daily dose of love, I use those mainly uh, to teach God's Word and to give instruction and guidance. But every now and then, I'm going to throw in something there, still based on God's Word, but for fun because it's important that we still continue to laugh and to remember the good times because this will come to an end. The verse 4b says... There's a time to mourn and a time to dance. And I think it's important that we especially remember those families right now that have experienced death and the circumstances prevented all the um, things that we normally do during those times. So please reach out by card or a phone call or maybe even having something delivered that you could order online uh, to a family to let them know that you love and care about them. It says there's a time to dance, and you know that I love that when somebody says, I didn't know Baptists were dance, supposed to be dancing, and I'll say, you know, loose, foot loose, everybody get foot loose. Do you not ever read the word? It says there's a time to dance, and let me tell you, when we get back in this sanctuary, Judith is going to hit that organ, and we are going to get on the love train, so just look out. The next verse says, there's a time, 5a says, there's a time to scatter stones 
and a time to gather stones. And this reminds me of planting seeds. And right now, I think that it's very important that in all that we are able to do, that we plant the seeds of the gospel in whatever way we can. I, I never would have dreamed two months ago that I would be doing a daily devotional online. That was not in my uh, bucket list. It, it was not something that I had dreamed of doing all my life. It was just that during this time of sheltering in place, I asked the Lord, Lord, what can I do to minister? And he literally guided me in doing that. I had no idea the magnitude of what it was going to be, dressing up every day and trying to get everything in place. But seriously, ask the Lord, what has he gifted you to do during this time when people are listening? They're watching they're asking God, what are you trying to say to me? Do your part. Scatter the seeds of the gospel wherever you go. Verse 5b says there's a time to embrace and a time to refrain. Well, I guess it's obvious <laughs> that this is the time to refrain. But you just better look out when we get back. Because I've got a lot of bent up, pent up hugs in me, and I, I've got to reach out. That song by, who was it, Diana Ross, reach out and touch somebody's hand, make this world a better place. Woo! We're going to have to have a lot of hand sanitizer, but we're going to get back to embracing. Verse 6a says, there's a time to search. I searched the world over and thought I found true love, but you met another and you was gone. Now, a lot of people will not remember hee-haw from that. But the Bible says there's a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep, and a time to throw away. And these are perfect days to do that. Go through your closets. Go through your garage. I promise you, you will find something that you were searching for a long time ago. And it'll be a blessing. Plus, you'll, you'll be able to give some things away when the time comes that you can do that. Verse 7 says, there's a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak. Our John Mark this past week wrote about his experience with COVID-19 and the purpose of him writing his letter was to have a voice for those who cannot speak right now, those who are less privileged, those that don't have the opportunities to have medical services when they need them. We as Christians need to stand up for those who can't stand up for themselves. We need to speak for those who can't speak for themselves because we are our brother's keeper. And finally, verse 8 says, there's a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. Right now is the time for us to come together, the entire world, to unite as one, to acknowledge that God is in control and that he is the only one who can fix this world. I think God is using this time of crisis to speak Every single part of our lives have been impacted. Every single part. Are you listening? Will you listen? And will you respond in obedience? The closing challenge today comes from a song written by Carolyn Winfrey Gillette. And it's sung by our youngest son, John Mark, and four of his colleagues at Christ Church Episcopal School in Greenville, South Carolina. The words are on the screen as they sing. Would you listen prayerfully to the threefold challenge that comes across in this song? First, that we would take this opportunity to examine ourselves and to listen as God speaks to us. Secondly, that we would be mindful of those around us in need 
and that we would do what we can to serve them in Jesus' name. And lastly, that we would remember, regardless of our circumstances, that we are now and forever will be surrounded by God's love. When we face an unknown future that we can't imagine yet, when the closest we have treasured turns from blessing into threat, as we miss our friends and loved ones, as we crave community, may we look God in this season for a whole new way to be. Jesus faced a lonely desert as a time to look within. There he met such trial and conflict, there he knew you were with him. In this time of separation, when we miss the life we've known, may we hear your voice proclaiming, I am here, you're not alone. May we cherish those around us as we never have before. May we think much less of profit, may we learn what matters more. May we hear our neighbors suffering, may we see our neighbors pain. May we learn new ways of offering life and health and hope again. God, when illness comes to threaten, and when so much here goes wrong, may we know this thing for certain, that your love is sure and strong. You're beside us in our suffering, and when times are surely tough, may 